Hey what's up guys and welcome back to another League of Legends guide video and in today's guide we're gonna be looking over Vladimir. Now this is a guide I've been wanting to do for quite a while because this champion is actually pretty damn broken as seen of on League of Legends right now because this guy everybody complains about how much healing he has and there is some aspect of counterplay to this guy but you know not a lot of people do know that so maybe I'll be explaining that in this video as well just so any of you people that don't like Vladimir I mean it's the purpose of this video is gonna be for people wanting to play Vladimir either way but this will help to find out what other people will look for on trying to counterplay you and everything else. So I'm going to show you every single thing about Vladimir the most I can. The combos, the builds, the abilities, everything else. And honestly, I gotta tell you, this champion is really broken right now. I think you should abuse this champion until he gets nerfed because he probably will get nerfed. But so far in the past few patches, he hasn't really been nerfed. It's a good thing and abuse him while you can. Because I was climbing really high with this champion and I think it's really good to pick up on this champion as soon as you can. So anyways, we'll be moving over to the abilities of Vladimir. So first off, we'll start with Vlad's passive. Every 40 points of bonus health gives one ability power, and every one point of ability power gives Vladimir 1.4 bonus health. This is why you build each health and AP, so Vladimir can stack it. But just so you know, it does not stack within itself on the passive. Otherwise, that would be kind of broken. Then we'll move to Vladimir's Q, which is Transfusion. When pressing Q on an enemy target, Vladimir drains the life force of a target enemy, which deals magic damage and heals himself. And now his Q can also be stacked when using Q twice, and his third Q will be empowered, because when you look at the bar at the bottom of of Vladimir's kit, you can see a charge amount, you can see 0 out of 2, and when you press Q once, it will charge it once. When you press Q again, it will charge it twice. But once it hits the second charge, your bar will go red, meaning while your bar is red, your transfusion will do a lot of damage and a lot of healing towards yourself. So it stacks your Q. So just keep an eye on the bar on the bottom because that is your Q ability, and also enemies can see this, so they'll be aware of when you have stacked Q, but that's where you should take advantage of it and get ready to use it, because your Q, because your empowered Q will only be up as soon as your Q is off cooldown. So be ready to use it. And also when he gets the full bar, he also gets 10% movement speed. So this will be Vladimir's main healing ability. Then we'll look at Vladimir's W. When pressing W, Vladimir just turns into a pool and it costs 20% of his health and he becomes untargetable. He also heals himself for 50% of the damage dealt and slows enemies by 40%. So this will be used as an alternative to Zonia's Hourglass and to avoid a bunch of targeted ultimates, you know, like a like a Karthus ulti. But I think if you get precasted with an ability like a stun like a LeBlanc E, you will most definitely get stunned if it pre-hits you and you turn into a pool. Your pool ability will also remove turret aggro, so you can use this for diving and helping you to get out, or you can use it to engage and help slow every single enemy down. And then we'll move over to Vladimir's E, which is Tides of Blood, and every time you use it, it will cost 8% of your health. So it has two different casts. Your first cast is where it charges up, but when you're on the first charge, Vladimir does slow himself by 20%. If the charge finishes or is interrupted, he automatically initiates the second cast, and his second cast is he unleashes a bunch of blood bolts that go everywhere. Now the one thing to note is one Nova Ball can only collide with one enemy. Even if two Nova Balls hit one enemy, it will not stack the damage, but they will only stack on minions, because otherwise this would be a really broken ability. When charging his E for at least one second, it will slow the enemies for 0.5 seconds. Enemies can intercept multiple bolts because they'll only be hit by one anyway, so it's good for supports that play against Vladimir, that go tanky. But his wave clear is amazing because multiple minions can absorb multiple bolts so it doesn't really matter. And then we'll look at Vladimir's R, which is Hemoplague. Vladimir infects all enemies in a target area with his plague, which increases the damage they take from all sources by 10%. And this will last for 4 seconds. So this is kind of like a Z ulti, but instead of stacking AD, you're stacking AP. So, well, you're not really stacking AP, you're just doing more damage while they're more vulnerable to take more damage. And then when your ulti ends, you will get a mass amount of healing from the enemy, so it will absorb a bunch of their health and give it to you. The more people you mark with your R, the more people you'll make vulnerable by 10% and you will also take all their health. Stacking this with your Q is really really good because you get so much healing and this is probably the biggest reason as to why people complain about why Vladimir is so broken. Vladimir is healed for every champion damage by the detonation so it's reduced to 50% after the first champion because if it was 100% by every champion then wow he, he's not gonna die. So those were Vladimir's abilities just to give a quick rundown I'm just gonna tell you what the abilities will do. His Q abilities so as we were talking about you gotta stack it up twice and then once it hits the bar charge up this is where you use your Q ability again this is most ideal to use against an enemy champion if they do anticipate it then you got to use it on like minions you can use your Q ability to farm and to use it for securing cannon minions as well because it is kind of hard to farm with Vladimir that's one thing to keep in note his W ability is really effective because he becomes untargetable you can use it as an escape and you can run away or you can go engage on the enemy you can lose tower aggro you can do extra damage you can use hextech protobelt while you're in your pool mode as well so you can do damage while they 
they can't even touch you. And then Vladimir's ear ability is what you use for wave clear, using it for doing a lot of damage because this thing is going to be the thing that makes you do a lot of damage. Considering Vladimir is a late game champion, your ear ability is going to be doing so much damage, you can charge it up, flash, and hit every single target in the enemy team. The best part about Vladimir as well is he is so good at engaging team fights, considering he has a W to keep him untargetable for a mass amount of time, and the enemy team will panic. They will probably end up attacking someone else before they even go back to you, while you're doing heaps of damages to them. And this is why Vladimir is terribly broken in most cases of this. But remember, there is counterplay to this champion, which is what I'll come to later. And then Vladimir's ultimate, this is what you use in team fights. You want to put it on as many people as you can in a team fight, and then you can engage, because this thing will be healing you for a heck ton. Just make sure you wait out the full four seconds. This is what Zonia's hourglass could be used for, and what your W could be used for, because your W can delay out the time, and so can Zonia's hourglass. Those two can delay out four seconds entirely, or you can go in with your four seconds that you have, damage everyone, pull at the very last bit, and get all your healing back to use your abilities once again. So this is why Vladimir is so strong and why everybody is wanting to play him right now, and he's mainly played top lane or mid lane as well. And this is where the builds and the runes sometimes differentiate, and the matchups as well. Now I'm gonna take you to Vladimir's runes, and the one thing to note is there are many, many different rune pages that you can go on Vladimir. I'm gonna show you two specific ones that I've been using that really, really help when playing with Vladimir and helps with nearly every matchup. Now when starting off with Vladimir, you wanna go Phase Rush, Nimbus Cloak, Transcendence, and Gathering Storm, going into Inspiration, going Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight, with the mini runes going CDR, Adaptive Force, and Health. Now Phase Rush is beautiful when you're running against your enemy. Usually you would take Ghost on Vladimir, but a lot of people don't do that anymore, so you can use Phase Rush to run against your enemies because it will help reduce the amount of slow that your E does and that your pool does. Well, generically, it's your E that's really slowing you at normal speed in W, and it's not really that fast. But when you're having Phase Rush, you can always stick to your enemies, and when you have max CDR, you can spam your abilities while keeping up to chase with them, because you'll be healing while chasing them, and they can't do anything. This is why you go Nimbus Cloak as well, because you'll be speeding up to them while you press R and helps you engage. Transcendence is really good because you want to get the early CDR you can, along with building excessive CDR, having to give you more damage. Gathering Storm helps Vladimir in the late game, because he's a super strong late game champion. He's not going to be doing a lot early game, he's just going to be farming. Same with the mid game, he'll just be maybe killing here and there, maybe he can 1v1 his laner, but he'll also be farming. Farming is one big thing that you need to do with Vladimir. Then on Inspiration, you want to go Magical Footwear. Now this screenshot was taken a while ago, which means I've not updated how Magical Footwear has been changed, but it still is a good rune to take on Vladimir. Magical Footwear did get a slight nerf in the minutes. It appears at 12 minutes, but when you take down an enemy champion, 45 seconds is knocked off instead of 30 seconds. So it's actually quite ideal still to take because it can work out for you as long as you're getting some roams in as well. I think it will really help to get Magical Footwear really early. And then Cosmic Insight helps to get that excessive CDR that you might need entirely over your kit because you're going to need as much CDR as you can. And then when you go CDR rune, this is such an important rune. When you go all of this, by 10 minutes, I guarantee you can get up to 30 to 45% CDR. I've already done it many times. By 10 minutes, you can get so much CDR. And then on the second rune page, I just changed the secondary to domination and put Taste of Blood and Ravenous Hunter. This really can help in terms of how much healing you can get, but the only reason why I go this less is because I already think Vladimir has enough healing and damage himself, which is why I'd go back to Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight. But this is somewhat of an option, and there are many other things that you can do with Vladimir, because he is quite flexible when it comes to the runes. Just make sure you don't take Vladimir jungle like I did one time, because I entered. Then we'll move you to Vladimir's build. For starter items, you can go Dark Seal and Refillable Pot. This is my most common option, because I always get greedy for the Magi stacks, so whenever I do get kills, I will always go for the Magi stacks. If I do fail out while having the Dark Seal, I'll sell it later to build up to another item. But my most generic start will be Refillable Pot, Dark Seal. You can go Corruption Pot, or you can go Three Pots as well. If you have a really strong matchup against you, you can go Doran Shield. I really do advise that. And if you want to really quick rush your item while you know you're stronger than your enemy laner, you can go Ruby Crystal so you can quick rush your items. Now for Core Starter, you want to go for the Boots, which are Sorcerer's Shoes. You want to get Fiendish Codex actually first before any other item. When you're starting with Vladimir, you always want to rush this item at the very beginning. You get 900 gold, you go recall, buy this item. This item will be built up later. The only reason you build this now is to get the CDR really fast. You get damage and CDR, which is what you're looking for early on in the game. Blasting one can help you build most of Vladimir's main items, so you can build this a lot later. Needlessly, Large Rod is going to be used to build your Spellbinder or Rabadon's Death Cap, and Hextech Revolver is going to be your second main item that you go after Fiendish Codex, because the first item you want to rush is your Hextech Protobel. If you've been in lane long enough to farm up a lot of gold for the Protobel, then you can get that before you get your Fiendish Codex. Because sometimes 
two top laners can get really stubborn about their farm, especially when they have TP or not, because they want to contest a lot of farm as well. So if you end up being top lane and you have enough gold to buy the portal belt straight away, go for it. So you can build any kind of boots depending on what kind of matchups you go against. If you go against really tough AD matchups, go Ninja Tabby. Otherwise, if they have a lot of CC and AP, you can go Mercury Treads. Otherwise, you want to go for a lot of damage and go Sorcerer Shoes. Banshee's Veil is a decent item considering it gives you magic resist, a spell shield, and a bunch of damage. Zonia's Hourglass is really good because you can use it to remain untargetable with your W. Rabadon's Death Cap is going to be your core damaging item straight after you build your Proto Belt. Now, this is how the build order works. You're going to go Proto Belt first, and then you want to build your Death Cap, then your Zonia's. If there's a strong AD matchup, then you go Zonia's Hourglass earlier than you do your Rabadon's Death Cap. The quicker you go Rabadon's, the more damage you do, and the more it helps out for your passive, your Qs, and your ultimates, because it really does help with your scalings and your passive. Morellonomicon is really good considering it inflicts grievous wounds, so this will be good against matchups like Nasus and Maokai. Void Staff is really good to have like as a fourth item because it does a lot of penetration. Ionian Boots is really good if you want to rush the CDR, because you can get it really fast. If you want to go 45% CDR in the first 8 to 10 minutes, you can get Ionian Boots, Fiendish Codex, and then you have your Transcendence and the Mini Rune giving you CDR all at once. Proto Belt to help you with the Wave Clear and pretty much to be your main item. You can use this while you're in your W form, not in your E form, just be careful of that. Rod of Ages is an option as well, but I wouldn't really highly recommend it, but it can work out to be like a tanky, late game scaling kind of item. Spirit Visage could be built as well because it will amplify all of Vladimir's healing. This will be a good late game healing item, but if they don't have a lot of AP, and if they're not doing a lot of damage to you anyways, you don't really have to build this. Leandry's Torment is probably my go-to item when I am falling off in some way or form because it does a lot of burn damage and keeps you alive in team fights because while they're burning, your stuff's coming back off cooldown and you can reapply the heals that you get. Spellbinder is really good because you can rush up on enemies and movement speed is really good to have on Vladimir because you can run down on enemies and do heaps of damage on them when you have 100 stacks on your Spellbinder. Otherwise, you can go Realize Crystal Scepter if you want to slow them down. If you have maximum stacks on your Dark Seal and hope that you're not going to die, you can go Medjai's. You want to buy Control Wards as many times as you can so when you take pressure over your laner, you can put it in the river. Take Oracle if you're going up against matchups like Teemo. Buy the AP Elixir if you're at maximum build and go Blue Wards if necessary or if nobody else on your team has built it. And then here's an example build to go up against a generic matchup which will really help late game. Vladimir's not gonna die considering he has a lot of magic penetration so he can heal a lot of tanks along with having to do a lot of damage to them because of how much penetration is there. And they won't be healing because considering you have the Morellonomicon and your Rabadon's Death Cap is your main damaging source. Protobel is gonna help you get into position and do heaps of damage. And then for summoner spells you want to always go flash and then as an alternative you can take TP, Ignite or Ghost. My two main are Ignite and TP. Whenever you're going top lane as Vladimir, always take teleport so you can always outfarm your laner. Remember, your, your goal isn't to like rush down an enemy and kill him. Your main goal is farm. You want to outfarm your enemy laner on top lane. If you're going mid lane and your top laner has TP already, you can go Ignite. Or if you want for an aggressive play and you know you can win your matchup, you can go Ignite. But otherwise, I do play the farm game. I always go TP generically. This is mainly for when people don't have TP on your team, but if they do, you can always go Ignite. So that's entirely up to you. So that was Vladimir's builds, and I'm just going to quickly tell you a bit of information on his laning, his team fighting, and his phases throughout the game. So early game, Vladimir is really weak. You're going to have to use this time to farm. Obviously, this is what's going to happen in every bit of early game, and you want to poke out your enemy using your Q ability as many times as you can without having to take damage because you got to be careful. Most melee champions do suffer against Vladimir unless it's a matchup like Riven because Riven has abilities to gap close onto Vladimir and you have to be more careful. That's more of a skill matchup moving close to a counter. You want to try staying healthy with your Q ability as well and make sure you can use your stacked Q on your enemy champion. Make sure to keep your W for when it comes for ganks. Another thing a lot of people do is they will save their level 2 and not put a point into their ability until they really need it and sometimes Vladimir does get cheese ganked at level 2 or possibly even at level 1 but he will be level 2 most likely meaning you could go pool to avoid the gank itself. So make sure you don't use pool rec recklessly because you're going to be needing that for escaping and engaging, but most likely for escaping enemy ganks because they can't really do anything to you once you're untargetable and in a pool. And this is also another reason why you keep wards down in your tri bush or in bushes that are necessary. Mid game Vladimir does get quite strong. When he hits level 6 first, he does get his first power spike, meaning he can potentially kill his enemy laner. So he's not really entirely weak, but he's a really good team fighting late game champion, which is why you have to try your best to scale to late game as fast as you can. 
can. So within this phase, you can either roam or keep up your farm. Make sure you keep track of where your enemy laner is so your allies know and keep up the farming. The more farm you have, the stronger you're gonna get. Then when Vladimir finally hits late game, he does heaps of damage, heaps of healing. He's just not gonna die. He's gonna turn into a big monster. When using your R ability on multiple champions, he's not gonna die. As long as the four seconds last out and you do a lot of damage to the enemy champion, you're not gonna die. You're just gonna keep doing heaps of damage. And I'll be using two team fighting examples to pull out from that. Here's a perspective to take from a fed Vladimir. You want to go in using your R ability, using your E to do a bunch of damage, and you want to pull under them so they can't damage you, but they'll be damaging your allies otherwise. And the thing I forgot to note about Vladimir's Q is when your W is active or when your E is charging, along with using Zonia's Hourglass, your Q stack does actually decay a lot slower, meaning it's extended duration. So you can save it, hold on to it, and use it later. And in this team fight, I just pretty much run it down, run onto the enemies, and make sure I use our ability first so all the damage is afflicted onto them and it will do heaps of damage which will heal me back and I could just keep using abilities over and over again my Q stack is about to be up and it's up I just press Q and it just does a heap of damage <laughs> what is this champion I I'm, st I'm still going at it. look at this thrush he's so scared just keep in mind when it comes to Vladimir's team fighting you always want to go for the squishiest target and you want to leech your Q off your tanks because you want to do a lot of damage to them and you'll probably have magic penetration by that time so you can use your Q to stack it up on enemies or you could just use it solely on the person you want to kill and it's mostly going to be the enemy ADC or the enemy mid laner someone that's really challenging on the enemy team and does a lot of damage so that was pretty much most of Vladimir's phases if you guys want to know more about that go ahead and put it in the comment section below so now we'll move over to Vladimir's combos <sighs> So now that we've finished with Vladimir's combos, we're gonna go through his pros and cons and conclude the video. Now the pros of Vladimir is he has extremely good sustain, considering his Q and ulti can compensate for that. He can 5v1 and has extremely good late game. He has good team fighting and AoE. He can do damage while he's untargetable, which is his pool, and when you're using Zonia's Hourglass, because your R will always pop off no matter what, and his abilities don't really cost anything, but his health. His E and his W do cost health, but his Q and R do not cost health, so it does really make up for it. You're manipulating his his blood to be the damage and to regenerate him. He has great engage with abilities and specific items, which includes Portabelt or Spellbinder, along with Phase Rush as well, but that is a rune. And he does hard carry most of the games when he's ahead or when he's winning lane. When you're winning lane or you're ahead, there is nearly no stopping Vladimir unless there is some counterplay to do to him, which is what I'll explain later. The cons of Vladimir is he's hard to farm with early game, so which is why you gotta use your Q ability. Patience is required for power spikes because Vladimir is not gonna be super, super strong unless you're patient because you need to be patient to farm and you're not gonna all in the enemy so early into the game because you don't you don't want to really focus on killing the enemy laner until you know you can kill them ganks can become a danger when w is down so you got to make sure you have that up all the time vladimir has high cooldowns in the early game which is why you build cdr to compensate for that he has a lack of mobility on the disengage considering phase rush is what you use to engage on the enemy but you can also use it as a disengage but you got you got to use it effectively and it's not always going to happen minions can block e damage which is a disadvantage when you're chasing down enemy champions because minions can absorb the damage that you intend to do on enemy champion and he's only strong mid towards late game early towards m first half of mid it's not really gonna be the biggest power spike of Vladimir but to, to be fair he still is strong enough to 1v1 his enemy laner if played well another con that I forgot to mention was the fact that CC is probably gonna be his biggest weakness it's gonna be the reason as to why he can't use his abilities which is pretty much everyone's weakness but this is one thing to look at when they have a team that has a lot of CC that's one danger that you got to look out for they're gonna CC you and not allow 
allow you to use your abilities. When you're chain CC'd, you cannot use abilities at all. You won't be able to pull zoniers or anything because most likely enemy champions that do have fears, silences, or whatever are gonna be your biggest weakness, especially Fiddlesticks Q. God, that needs a nerf. And make sure you anticipate a lot of CC early on in the game and make sure you know that enemy champion so you know how their CC works. You wanna avoid it as many times as you can and you wanna overpower your enemy laner if you can. So that was pretty much Vladimir in a nutshell. So this is probably why everybody's complaining about this champion and why he's so broken right now. But I think while you can, abuse him right now. He's so easy to play. I don't think you can mess up on him. I think you guys will do so well on him and you should just, you know, ab abuse the hell out of this champion. He's just so good. But anyways, guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys want to see more videos like this, then go ahead and put it down in the comment section below. And I will also increase my uploading rate because I've completely gone downhill with the uploading rate. So I will increase on that. And uh, yeah, do not worry about it, guys. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Peace, guys, and see ya.